T and John had a weakness. Eh? It's one weakness that was almost exclusively non-Canadian. It had Peruvians, Americans, Argentines, and Brits, and Alec, <laughs> who had the count as he takes Canadian cultural cringe to such a pitch that it tips over into something else. So Team John never fully prepared me for dealing with Canadians, who were as much of a mystery to them as they remain to me. <laughs> there was once a program on Canadian television called Talking to Americans. The premise was that a reporter would interview Americans chosen at random on the street to demonstrate their ignorance about, their country, about the country just to the north. The reporter would stop and ask pedestrians in Iowa City or Baton Rouge or wherever, do you think the USA should bomb Saskatchewan? Should we invade? Eliminate the Saskatchewan threat? The interviewees would scratch their heads, turn to their spouses and say, gee, yes, honey, I guess we should bomb Saskatchewan. How the Canadians would laugh. Stupid Americans. But of course the joke was on Canada, overlooked and ignored once again by a powerful neighbor that feels no need to concern itself with such trifles. And anyhow, the good citizens of Iowa City were only just off the mark. One province to the west. All will be well. Bobby Alberta will be a rather good idea. <laughs> Talking to Canadians, it's the real challenge, I think. Americans are open and upfront. With Canadians, it's hard sometimes to see beyond the surface veneer of polite non-committal. <laughs> After all, this is a country in which conflict avoidance is written into the Constitution. <laughs> so Team John was little use in probing the Canadian psyche. This I've had to learn from bitter experience. <laughs> and you too can learn from my mistakes. So just one tip about how to get on with our friends in the Great White North. Don't. Edit. <laughs> the Wikipedia articles that they have written <laughs> about themselves. <laughs> Don't! Simply do not. It may seem a good idea at the time, but what do you know? Are they, are not they too in their own special manner contributing to the sum total of human knowledge? I have with me therefore a couple of presents. I hope will be shared around the extended Hannington family. I had to go all the way to Boston last weekend to fetch this t-shirt and a little key ring. Ask me about Wikipedia. And who in any case can speak with equanimity about their own families? I ask you to look around at the assorted Beasley Murrays scattered through the room. Not a pretty sight, is it? <laughs> I personally have met every single Beasley Murray that has walked the earth. <laughs> or in the latest instant, merely been pushed across it in a stroller. <laughs> until very recently, until this past week, I was the only person in the world in this unenviable position. So I've had time to study and reflect upon the tribe. <laughs> it is a truth universally acknowledged that the Beasley Murray is over the age of 10, very few are fully presentable in a public setting. The rest of us are perhaps a more acquired taste. But Fiona and the kids have perhaps surprisingly, but with immense graciousness, rather taken to them. And in turn, the family is very much taken to Fiona, also to Sophie and Theo, and of course, little baby Dee. In Chelmsford in London, they may be breathing a little freer this week, but it's grand for my part that my brother's sister and brother-in-law have made it across the ocean, my Uncle Andrew's presence of Brits are very particular delight. The enthusiastic contributions of all my almost all my nephews and nieces, Jemima, Felix, and Rafi has been a feature of the past few days. We're just sorry that my sister-in-law Charlotte and Tim and Charlotte's daughter Clara couldn't make it out. And as for my parents, <coughs> you won't often hear me say too many kind words about them. <laughs> but they have been very good indeed of all the changes of the past few years. Indeed, they're amongst the very few have emerged, I think, of real dignity, and they've taken in their stride and more. The sudden expansion to their family, represented by the entrance of four somewhat unexpected Canadians. <laughs> Talking about families, still, it's been a great pleasure to get to know some of Fiona's closest relations. I want to pick out just two. I'm thinking first, particularly Fiona's mother, Wendy. 
She's undoubtedly a singular individual, but how much worse it would be if she weren't. There's nothing worse than the nondescript. And Wendy has a heart of solid gold. I'm also lucky enough to have been able to bond a little with Fiona's father, Mark, and stepmother, Gloria. Sadly, Fiona and the kids had to cancel the trip to Hawaii to see them in March. But in the spirit of self-sacrifice, I volunteered to go in their stead. <laughs> and I had a most enjoyable weekend being interrogated while drinking Negronis around their backyard swimming pool. Meanwhile, in the very heart of suburban darkness, <laughs> Fiona bucks all the trends. Where do I start in her praise? Where do I stop? The obvious things are indeed obvious enough. She's gorgeous, stunning, gracious, charming, kind. She lights up any social occasion. More than this, she's open-minded without being unopinionated. She's immensely tolerant. Some, no doubt, would say with me, she has to be, <laughs> without putting up with any nonsense. She's, in short, quite un-Canadian. <laughs> She's inquiring, curious, lively, never boring, smart, thoughtful, considerate, and immensely loving. She's introduced into my life two rather intriguing characters, Sophie, Elise, Hannington, Belton, a young lady who shares many of her mother's virtues, and who honestly, she tells me, has no interest at all in the actor who cannot be named, but who plays Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Theodore Quinn Hannington Belton, a young man who is immensely thoughtful and sociable with his friends, a quality I very much prize, as well as a boy who has the remarkable ability to subsist almost entirely on balsamic vinegar and veggie burgers. <laughs> Finally, Fiona has brought David and Iron, a charming young creature who is full of potential and possibility. I very much look forward to watching and helping him grow and develop, along with Sophie and Theo, and as Fiona and I, we hope, continue to grow, develop, and learn ourselves. The last year or so has been something of a Annus Mirabilis, of course, many of my friends worried that things were going too far, too fast. Team John were rather concerned on occasions. It wasn't just you, Yolanda. For them, the most disturbing aspect of the spell that Fiona was putting me under, they thought, was the fact that she had lured me to the far distant Burnaby. But despite that, it's been a year of blessing. We're both old and perhaps wise enough to know that there will be tough times perhaps tough years in the store, downs as well as ups. But Fiona is the perfect pioneer with whom to weather such storms, and even with whom to create a few squalls of our own. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be embarked on, embarking on this journey with her. So please, once more, a toast to the bride. Yay!